Good evening, everyone. My name is Mike Fiato, and I'm the head of school here at Lowell High School. And I'm very excited that you can join us for this evening's presentation, which will detail the project's design, schedule of construction, student and staff safety during construction, all the benefits and impacts to each graduating class, and other key details of the Lowell High's construction project. The format for today's presentation will, will include an introduction of all of the new school construction team members, a slideshow presentation, followed by a question and answer. So if you have questions, please use the Q&A feature and not the chat feature, and we'll do our best to answer all of your questions from, members of, from the members of our panel. We're very fortunate tonight to have some translators available who can assist if you have any questions. I'd like to introduce our translators prior to getting started. And if you do have any questions, you can um, put your questions in the chat in the Q and A feature, and we'll be sure to translate those in English. Uh, first, uh, I'd like Patron Yameri, please introduce yourself. Bonsoir, tout le monde. Merci de nous avoir rejoint pour cette réunion. Nous sommes là, et si vous avez une question, écrivez sur le chat, et moi je vais alors traduire en anglais. Uh, je m'appelle Patron, je travaille à Low Public School, uh, je suis le bilingue liaison. Accent tisana kwa kutu join kwa uh, nani ya leo, na leo tutakwa tunafanya hii mkutano. Kama unaswali, andika pale chini kwenye box na minta kwa natafsiri. Accent. Thank you Patron. We have Navi Nuan. Navi? All right, we'll have, we have Catherine Patino. Buenas noches, mi nombre es Caterine Patino. Soy el enlace entre las familias hispanohablantes y las escuelas públicas de Lowell. Voy a estar aquí para traducir o interpretar sus preguntas y respuestas. Abajo hay un cuadrito que dice Q y A. Ahí pueden poner sus preguntas y respuestas y yo con mucho gusto, gusto lo traduciré en inglés. And we also have from Lowell High School, Maria Morissette. Oi, pessoal. Então, eu sou a Maria Morissette, né? Eu trabalho na Lowell High School. Eu estaria aqui para fazer a tradução em português. Esse é um plano que a Lowell High School tem para, né? Eles estão renovando a escola e é um plano extraordinário que, né? Eles estão colocando em prática. Então, se você precisar responder quiser fazer alguma pergunta para a gente responder, você só coloca ali embaixo, faz a pergunta e a gente vai responder da melhor forma possível, ok? Thank you, Maria. And Navi, were you able to join or is Navi not on the call? Ok, we'll keep it moving. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, so, again, if, if anyone has a question, you can put it in the Q&A feature and we will be sure to be monitoring that. And um, during and after the presentation, we'll be sure to respond to those questions. Now I would like to introduce Mr. Bob Bell from Perkins Eastman, who will be introducing our panelists and taking us through today's presentation. Bob? Thank you very much, Headmaster Fiato. Um, I would, uh, Robin, if you could go to the next slide. Um, I'm gonna begin by just introducing the team, those people that have been working on the design, as well as those construction professionals that will be part of um, the building the project. So with us tonight, um, and also we'll be speaking in the presentation are Joe Drown. He's from Perkins Eastman, the architectural firm. He is the senior project manager and the principal in charge for Lowell High School. I myself and Robert Bell, I am the educational programmer and planner, um, and I will speak tonight as well. Uh, with me, joining me is also Don Guariello, who is the project designer, project architect from Perkins Eastman, and also team member Robin Greenberg, who is also assists as the project management duties with, with Joe. Um, the four of us are, represent the architectural firm. We also have with us from the owner's project manager, uh, we have Jim Dowd from Skanska, uh, and he will be participating. And our two fellows from um, Suffolk Construction, uh, they are the construction managers, uh, will be building the project. We have Chris Wallington and Rex Radloff. Next slide. So I want to thank everybody uh, for joining 
I also want to remind everybody that if uh, there may be many people that could not join tonight, if you have friends or others in your, in your neighborhoods or in your community, please let them know that this is recorded and, and is available. Um, we wanted to talk a little bit uh, about where we've been and where we're going. So we have been drawing, documenting, uh, and developing the design for this project um, for pretty much five years now. We're, we're closing in on the completion of what we call the construction documents. So uh, this has gone from just the seed of an idea um, all the way to uh, developed drawings so that it can be constructed and built uh, in accordance with the educational vision in the program. Um, I also wanna say that we, we look forward and we can see that there's about five years of construction ahead of us. But I do wanna point out that really um, there's about four years worth of construction on the school site. So the first year of construction is actually happening on the neighboring property. And even as we, uh, we see that the, the duration of construction on the school site proper uh, is four years, uh, during that time, uh, every just over a year, in just over a year increments, there will be significant portions of the new school that will be completed and the students will be able to take advantage of new spaces as they come available. So it's, it's really not a waiting period for four years. Uh, the students that are going to the school will, through the course of their time uh, on site, be able to start to use parts of the new building. And we'll get into a little bit more detail uh, on that. Next slide. So I just want to talk at a very high level about what this project is all about. Um, it is a renovation in addition of the existing high school. Um, some of the key objectives were to create one campus. We know that we have the canal that, that splits two different sides of the site, but a very important part of this project is to bring the freshmen onto the school campus. So rather than being down the road, uh, they will be part of this new campus. They will also still be in very distinct space. A freshman academy uh, will remain basically as part of the new construction and be a more intimate environment for those students just coming into the, the high school itself. Um, when we talk about renovation, we're really talking about a major transformation. So we are not talking about just a coat of paint and the change of flooring or ceilings. We're talking about um, if any of the existing buildings um, are part of that renovation, what we call a gut reno. That means everything is transformative, it'll feel like new. Uh, the historic buildings, of course, will look uh, historic. In fact, they'll be um, refurbished to look more appropriately uh, as they should from their time period from the outside, uh, but from the inside, it would be a state-of-the-art 21st century school building. Um, some of the other transformations that this project includes are what we call a transformation from hardscape to green. Uh, and that's kind of architectural babble, but really, as you all know, that the, uh, the Lowell High School uh, pretty much fills the site. There's not a lot of green space. Um, students do travel across uh, Father Morris at Boulevard to get some green space. But a major change with this new facility is to incorporate green and daylight throughout the school. So the new school, will, will, you will see in a moment, uh, surrounds green space. Um, there's also, there are also green roofs and there's good uh, daylight that is, that is going to be brought into the school, even into the center of the school where there is no daylight right now. Um, and that's important. It's not just an architectural idea. It's not just a great environment, but these things actually contribute to uh, teaching and learning and allow students to learn uh, and perform at their best. Uh, it's also a high performance building. And what that means is it will be high performance for learning. So the simple things that you might take for granted, such as acoustics or thermal comfort or good uh, overhead lighting, these things are all gonna be um, modern and, and basically uh, a much improved environment. That means it'll be a lot less stressful. The environmental stressors won't be affecting students and should help them learn as well. Um, but it's also gonna be high performing from a, a sustainability point of view. It will be a green building. Um, we, uh, we are making it as energy efficient and water efficient as possible. Um, and we'll be planning for solar panels. Uh, the roof will be solar ready. 
Um, the last few things I'll talk about about this project are that it's going to be zoned uh, different than it is now. Um, we're going to create a heart to the school, kind of a major space that's identifiable as the center of the school, and it's going to connect all the major spaces uh, with the exception of the auditorium. Um, and that also helps for the community that comes into the building so that they will be kind of somewhat contained into those areas. We will also have a very distinct freshman academy. We'll have um, the athletics wing, and we'll also have the arts wing as well as distinct portions of the building. Um, the school will feature state-of-the-art science, tech, arts, and athletic facilities, and you'll get a glimpse at some of those in just, just a moment. Next slide. What we're looking at here is just a, a three-dimensional image of your current school. Um, running along the left-hand side here is Father Morissette's Boulevard, and down at the lower portion is Arcan Drive. Um, you can see the existing field house, the hexagon shape. Um, beyond that, you can see what we refer to as the 1980s building, or uh, more appropriately, it's the west side of the canal. And on the east side of the canal, you can see um, on the left-hand side, the 1922 building, and then the historic 1890s building as well, uh, with the bridges that are connecting it. Um, you can see just to the right of the existing field house, um, there's a box that represents the 75 Arcan building, which is being taken down. Uh, next slide will show you the new facility. Next slide. Yes. Um, so here we can see in the foreground a five-story building, which is predominantly the freshman academy. It's actually the top four floors, and the bottom floor is a science and technology wing. To the right-hand side, what used to be the 75 Arcan Drive property is now the new uh, athletic facility. And you can see that the 1922 and 1890s buildings remain in the background. Um, a portion of the 1980s or the, or the western side of the canal exists, um, but the rest of it is new construction. And you can see here that the building really um, shapes itself around this new green space. Next slide. Before we get down to eye level, um, I just want to show this is a site plan. So this is uh, looking from above down onto the, the floor plan. And you can see those spaces that I was talking about uh, on the property next door. We'll, it'll become part of the school property, but that's where the gymnasium athletic facilities are being built. You can see here the freshman academy and the green space in the middle. You can also see that along Arcan Drive and along Father Morissette Boulevard, there's more space, there's more room, there's green space and trees, creating a buffer that not only helps define the street edge, but gives the students a place to arrive and to safely wait at the end of each day. In the middle of the 1980 building, you can see a few green squares. Those are what we call, we call light wells. Uh, there are portions of the middle of that building that receive no daylight, and this is the way that we're going to bring daylight into every uh, classroom and lab space in the school. And then you can see, of course, the 1922 building uh, has an existing courtyard separating the 1922 and the 1890s building. Um, next slide. I'll have Dawn start to pick up. We're getting down to eye level. This is a look at the main entry to the school straight ahead as if you were coming from the parking garage. You can see off to the right hand side is the Freshman Academy and uh, the darker corners here where you can see some glass are the stairwells. One of them is for the Freshman Academy. One of them is actually in the existing building but we're, we're bringing daylight into those stairwells. Um, make them a little bit safer um, but also again try to make a little bit more of the visual connections to outside. Dawn, do you want to pick up from here? Sure. Thank you, Bob. So as Bob mentioned, this is the new entry. You might recognize it um, as the existing entry, only <laughs> a new face to it. And it's actually closer to Father Morissette, which is nice. It creates this plaza that Bob spoke about in the, you can see the trees along um, parallel to Father Morissette that set up this nice pedestrian boulevard. Uh, the the bay of to the right that protrudes the upper four floors of the freshman academy are actually the science labs and general classrooms and below that as bob mentioned is sort of the business slash stem engineering robotics um, the first floor and it's raised up a little bit from grade the finished floor as you might recognize the existing building is up a little that entry plaza as it exists sort of slopes up uh, that will remain so the um, there's quite a bit of 
uh, durable base and solidity to the uh, face of the building that Father Moore set, which creates a nice barrier um, between the folks that are walking along the street and the students that are actually on the first floor studying in the labs there. Robin, would you mind going to the next slide, please? Uh, as you enter into the new entryway, uh, this is what we're calling the heart of the school. This is really where the new freshman academy building, the existing 80s is to the right that's being renovated. Uh, you can see that collaboration stair, the community stair directly in the middle. Uh, what that does is takes you up to the new athletic and wellness center, the new um, gym, if you will. Uh, at, in the gym, the main gym is at the second floor level. There's locker rooms and kitchen, et cetera, at the lower level. Um, so that creates this nice connection that also connects at the first floor, the um, upper cafeteria, the upper grade cafeteria. Directly above that is the freshman cafeteria. So they are vertically connected via that stairwell that students can sit and enjoy lunch. Or you can travel through the doors to the right to that um, quad, the green space that Bob described, and you'll get a view of that in just a moment. So this space will be vibrant and really becomes the intersection of all of these uh, dynamic spaces. Next slide, please. The quad, which I mentioned, this is the view as you enter from Arcan Drive. Uh, the, to the left, all that glazing, that's the space we were just in that you could see out. So the connection there, the visual connection as you enter through the new um, front entrance, you'll get views and um, daylight from this nap from this new green space that connects the part of the school. Um, that stairwell is beyond the middle piece of the building. That's new construction where we peeled back some of the 1980s building and built new construction to connect to the new gymnasium and wellness center, which you see on the right hand side. This quad is multi uh, purpose. There can be some sports activities, there can be outdoor dining, there can be, you can see the marching band on, um, projected on the wall. It's actually intended that there could be movies or projections um, in this space. And it's gated off from Arcan and up a little bit from the sidewalk level. So it's really protected throughout the day. So really it's intended for students, staff, teachers only throughout the day, but available to be open on the weekends for community use as appropriate. So this space is a safe space Space for the students that is gated off um, via a landscape um, fence, if you will, with a, a canopy that's protected from the weather. As you enter into the new gymnasium, would you go to the next slide, please, Robin? This is at the second floor, but this is a approximately a 24,000 square foot gymnasium. It's got a six lane track um, and the ability to have competition basketball and other sports, batting cages, et cetera. Uh, you can see that we're getting quite a bit of natural light. The quad is directly in the middle through. You can see the treetops, if you will. That's that quad space that I just showed you an image of. Um, and this is really a celebration of the, the student athletes and health and wellness that um, is very much promoted at Lowell High. Next slide, please. Back to the heart of the school, there's the cafeteria that really connects how you enter the building to both the canal, the quad, which I showed you via that stairwell, which is just to the right of this view, and also one of those light wells that brings natural light in that Bob mentioned, and that's directly on the left there. So that's gonna bring natural light from two, three stories above um, into this lower level cafeteria that you get glimpses out to both the canal and the quad um, from this main cafeteria space. Next slide, please. That cafeteria space also connects to an outdoor terrace um, that is along the canal side of the property between um, the gym is directly to the left. The view I just showed you is through that large swath of glazing um, directly in front of you. What we have above that is an outdoor terrace, which connects to the clean energy lab. So there may be some photovoltaics and a um, wind turbine that support the education there. There's also the ability to have um, uh, planters to grow uh, fruits and vegetables. And that's at an upper level where it's really student and staff only um, that have access to that space. But it's directly south facing as well as this terrace, which we're hoping will um, you know, promote 
fresh air and outdoor dining, which we know exists now sort of along where the trolley uh, travels. And I can't tell, oh yeah, the trolley's just to the right. It's covered by the panelists in my view, but um, that trolley travels directly uh, parallel to that um, grass that you see. You can also see one of the new bridges. Uh, there will still be two bridges. They will be replaced, the current ones, or tunnels, I know they're called. <laughs> uh, this is the south tunnel replacement. The north tunnel will be moved um, a few structural bays south to be a little more central to promote better um, connectivity throughout the campus. And what those do is connect over, as you know, to the 1922 building, which you can see um, on the right-hand side of the image. Next slide, please, Robin. Speaking of the 1922 building, this is the Kirk Street side. Uh, what we're doing is we're keeping the exterior shell, if you will, um, and we're replacing the windows and some of the entries. We're doing quite a bit of work, as Bob mentioned, on the inside, a, really a gut renovation. Uh, but this is a, what this is showing is a new accessible entry. Um, the front entry is accessible and will remain so and, and be replaced with a new ramp. But here, the doors on the right connect you into the building. And it's a split building, as you know. Um, the basement is sort of half a level up. And the first floor is, um, has some stairs up. And what this will do is connect you directly to a vertical uh, elevator that one can go in through the door and get to any floor um, from an accessibility standpoint. We have a couple new canopies to protect from the weather and really just promoting a new um, welcoming entry throughout the campus. Next slide, please. Inside of the 1922 building, as you know, we have the historic 19, I'm sorry, 1890s building. And this space is currently, um, has a structural floor and the teacher's room is on the upper level. We're demolishing that and really restoring this old dance hall that was formerly a two-story space at the upper level of the 1890s building. And what this will do is house the, um, the books and stacks for the media center. This building is so large, we actually have two media centers, but this is really the traditional media center where one might go and uh, do research on a computer or have access to computer labs or simply go pick up a fiction book and either read it or check it out. So this space will have quite a bit of restoration from a historic standpoint and um, we'll have approximately 22,000 volumes, 23,000 volumes of books. Next, I'm now going to turn it over to, it's Joe, right, to talk about timeline? Uh, Jim. Oh, Jim's going through here. Sorry, Jim. Sorry, no Jim, it's all you. <laughs> you so the benefits uh, of this beautiful school are gonna be seen um, Starting in April of 22, we've um, put together this slide, which will show you what is under construction, which is in maroon, and all of the tan areas are available and open. So the first area that's going on under construction, which is starting um, this week, uh, some people saw site fence went up uh, on Friday, and Suffolk is going to be uh, mobilizing this week. Uh, so the gym is starting and will be completed in the spring of 22. Uh, once that's complete, um, the team will move on to where the field house is right now, as well as the current uh, main entry and construct the new freshman academy, uh, as well as the um, cafeteria, uh, which will then come online um, over winter break of 2023 to 2024. So at that point, um, in 2024, there'll be a new gym, the new freshman academy, uh, as well as the new cafeteria will all be online. Um, I would note that the freshmen are going to stay in the existing freshman academy until the end uh, of the project. We then move on to renovating the 1980s building in 2024, as well as uh, the northern part of the 1922 building. And then for uh, in mid 2025, you'll have the new gymnasium, new freshman academy, renovated 1980s building, and renovated uh, auditorium at the north end of 1920, 1922 building um, online. 
to the point where we're in phase four and then the entire school uh, will be brand new for school year starting in the fall of 2026. Robin, if we can move on to the next slide. And we have created uh, this graph, which is a, a little dense, but it shows you uh, based on year of graduation, um, what benefits uh, will be gained from what graduating class. So for example, the first graduating class uh, that will see benefits is the current juniors uh, in 2022, they will catch a few months of the, uh, of the gymnasium. Um, the 2023, which I believe are current sophomores, will have um, a new gymnasium for the tail end of their junior year and then the uh, entire senior year. Um, and it's pro it progresses on. The uh, presentation will be available online if anybody wants to, uh, to, check, to check this out to the point where the class of 2030 Will be the first class that walks into a brand new school in September um, and sees a brand new school for their entire um, uh, years in high school. Uh, but as you can see, it becomes uh, everybody gains benefits uh, as, as it progresses. Um, next slide. Thank you, Robin. And I believe we're transitioning to a new speaker now. Yeah, uh, thanks, Jim. Um, so this is uh, basically a graphic of uh, the steps that Jim just walked us through in terms of the phasing. Uh, this is our existing campus. So um, on the uh, left side of the canal, we call that uh, the west side, we have 75 RCAM. Uh, that's the work that you're starting to see uh, under construction today. Uh, and to the north of it, we have the existing gymnasium and the 1980s building. And then of course, uh, between uh, the west side and the east, we have the Merrimack Canal, which is traversed by uh, the bridges. Uh, and then uh, the 1922 building uh, and the Freshman Academy is uh, to the far right. Next slide. So the first step that we'll be doing is taking down uh, the existing office building uh, on 75 Arcan. Uh, and that allows us to make way for uh, the new gymnasium. Next, next slide. So the gymnasium will be built uh, in the, from the spring of uh, 2021 to the spring of 2022. And uh, that happens uh, in this uh, separate lot. And then uh, as we move forward in time, thank you, Robin, next slide. We, uh, once that is completed, uh, we will, the students will have occupancy of the gym. And then we'll start to take down uh, the existing building which is comprised of the, uh, the, gymnas the gymnasium, as well as uh, the southern side of the 1980s building. By taking down the gymnasium, that allows us the space on, on the site to put up the new freshman academy. Next slide. And then this uh, phase goes from the summer of 22 through the winter of 2023. And in doing this, we have, um, the completion of the Freshman Academy. And that provides us a number of classrooms, 60 new classrooms that allows us to do the next phase, which is the renovation work. You can see in, in this phase also we have, back one slide, we have the, uh, the completion of the uh, Southside 1980s building and also the new uh, bridge uh, that's connecting um, to the East and uh, West campus. Next slide. We then go to the uh, uh, next phase, which is from the winter of 2024 through the spring of 2025. And we now are getting into the renovation of the existing building, the northern portion of the 1980s building and the northern portion of the 1922 building, uh, as well as the demolition of the northern bridge and the uh, construction of the, the new bridge. Next slide. We follow that um, by the renovation of the southern portion of the 1922 building. Um, and uh, that's completed in the summer of 2026. All this time while the Freshman's uh, Academy is off campus uh, to allow all of this work to be done uh, in, because we have this new uh, classroom space that allows us to move students in there and have uh, safe 
construction in the renovation portion. And then the next slide. The completion of the project is uh, in the fall of uh, 2026. And then at that time, the freshmen are back, uh, they become uh, on campus and occupy the freshman academy. And now Chris uh, and his team will be taking us through some of the strategies of uh, construction during a phased uh, environment and uh, separating uh, school use from uh, construction use. Next sure. slide. Thank you, Joe, I appreciate that. Uh, so we've been really studying, we've been on the job for almost a year and a half now. Uh, we've been studying with the design team, uh, with uh, the OPM to go through and you know, our priorities have always been and will always be uh, that the you know, word guest here, we realize that. Uh, we wanna make sure that the, um, the education is by far the, the most important thing. And we put a lot of effort into the phasing plans you just saw to make sure that's the case. We'll always be separated. You know, so students will be in one area, construction in another. Uh, we'll have uh, significant walls built between them. Uh, a lot of times we're in entirely different buildings and have it easily spaced apart. Uh, and want to make sure it's safe, both inside the building and outside the building. So again, we'll try and separate that as best we can. Some quick um, things we'll be doing in there to try and emphasize this, if you can jump to the next slide. Thank you. Again, uh, separate zones, including uh, stacking them up so that we would never be doing construction over or underneath a classroom where students are in. We always will take an entire um, wing, when we entire area, um, so classrooms all together stacked up. Uh, separate uh, stairways and hallways always. So our construction trades people will, will be separate from the students, faculty and staff. Uh, when we do have walls between us, we'll be, there'll be uh, acoustically uh, built walls. Uh, so you will not be able to hear through them. Uh, we'll also have them sealed off so that uh, no dust or debris can come through. And uh, another technique we use for that is uh, using negative air in which inside the spaces we're working, we'll actually be sucking the air in so that if any odors or anything comes in, they actually will come in from the school side, from where the students are into our area and not the other way. So everything will stay within our area. And there's different ways of monitoring and testing that, which will go on continuously when we're doing this. Uh, we've also been out with the mechanical engineers uh, studying the existing utilities to make sure that as, as we're putting on new systems, new fire alarm, the old fire alarm still working in other areas of the building, making sure duct work continues to work. So there's been a big emphasis on that and we'll continue to do that and reinforce that throughout. Uh, so a lot of work has gone into trying to come up with a plan of phasing that works well to keep ourselves separated, uh, allows the construction to move on uh, and keep you know, ourselves completely separated. There'll also be several days out there we understand when testing will be going on. It will, will you know, be what we call quiet days or days we can't work, we can't do much work on site. So we've been meeting with the school to figure those out and, and work through any issues like that to come of it. Mm. Uh, here's just a couple examples of some uh, temporary walls we put up in the past. Um, these ones are actually, we're going to actually go with a, a little bit heavier grade one for, for this school here to keep the sound away. But what you'd see here is you look down the corridors, these are actually existing corridors in Lowell High School. We just uh, photoshopped these in. Uh, temporary walls we put up so that we'd be on one side of the wall. Uh, however, you'd still keep your code compliant corridors open on the other side. Uh, and this will allow this work to continue on. Uh, most loud work and most disruptive work will be done during either off hours, during summers, or during school vacations. So we've done a good job with maneuvering and manipulating the schedule to allow the heavy, noisy, dusty work to happen when students aren't in, that, in the building at all or in that section of the building. That's something we'll continue to keep reinforcing as we go through the process. Uh, and then one other thing here is we talked about we'll be taking down in phase two the southern end of the 1980s building. There's actually a picture we did something similar at Somerville High School. Uh, so when we do this, we'll build an entire temporary enclosure wall that's uh, built, um, you know, to take the weather, take the sound out, so that um, it basically becomes a new temporary exterior wall that'll be built to keep us, you know, us isolated when we're building out the backside of the job to begin the new work uh, while the school is in operation on the other side of the wall. So these be things that we put into place uh, during off hours or in this case here over our summer. So that when the kids come back to school that next year, this stuff is in place. Uh, they're on one side of it and then the construction zone, similar to what you see here would be on the other side of it.
Okay, and I think with that, we'd like to turn it back over. Um, we'd like to open it up, remind people. I can see we've got some questions coming in. Um, Robin, I'll ask if you can uh, help navigate this, but uh, encourage people if they have questions um, to please use the Q&A chat. And, uh, we'll uh, the first with. question is for you, um, asking about how the TV studio is gonna be accommodated during this project. Will it be yes. uh, relocated to another building, same size? What accommodations mm -hmm. are you providing? Yeah, so um, we've gone through a robust visioning process where um, we talked about what are the educational goals and objectives. Um, and we've also been meeting regularly with um, not only the educational leadership, but with uh, the instructors from all programs. And one of the things that was really important for the TV studio folks was to be better connected to some of the art and photography programs that overlap. Um, so in this design, what we've done is we've relocated the TV studio to be with the art and TV production lab. Um, these are all located at the lower level of the 1922 building. Uh, it was also important that we found some uh, tall space for the TV studio. And so we're able to accommodate uh, a bit more height effectively underneath the stage of the existing auditorium. Uh, and we've been working closely with the folks that run that department to make sure uh, the layout specifications and all the needs are there. Um, it is the same size, possibly slightly larger. What we did is we measured the existing uh, network of rooms um, and just kind of put a, an overall number to that. We rounded up and that's the amount of space that we're providing in the new location. Um. If I may, um, there will be a temporary TV studio because where they currently are located is part of what's coming down. Um, I think it's in the phase two. They will move for a few years over to the existing auditorium in the Freshman Academy, which will be, as you know, a couple buildings down the street uh, until the duration of the project under which their new space will be available to them. And they have a beautiful layout within that entire auditorium that will suit their needs um, while the project's under construction. So it, it I just- Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. And in fact, the, uh, again, the staff that are also reviewing that temporary layout said it, it's so nice, they may not wanna leave. <laughs> so we're doing our- All right, um, Renee has a couple questions and I'm gonna break them down to, uh, different folks to answer. So if Chris and Rex can answer the first part, what are the plans to manage asbestos and lead remediation? Sure, so for any of uh, remediation that's gonna happen uh, on the project, it would most likely happen either off hours or during summers. Uh, we'd also do it in an area that is isolated, similar to those walls you saw that be built and to keep it isolated. We would be doing air monitoring, uh, both ourselves, Suffolk, as well as the uh, design team will have a professional out there doing air monitoring. Um, we'll have it tied into a system that would send us an alarm if they saw any troubling air monitoring going on, um, troubling readings. Um, but you all regulated by the DEP and they have a system in place for different levels that goes through with that. Um, but like I said, mostly it'd be off hours or over summers or over breaks um, and inside you know, those isolated uh, chambers you saw with negative air pressure, sealed containers, um, sound barriers and all that. Uh, her second question was, what are the plans for energy and environmental sustainability operations? Uh, Joe, can you answer that? Sure. We've been working with um, the team, the, the city uh, team uh, from the beginning uh, to uh, really target uh, strategies for uh, sustainability. And they start in areas uh, in terms of how the building is oriented. Uh, you'll see with uh, how the classroom wing, for example, uh, uh, for the new freshman academy uh, was designed so that you could control the natural light that comes into the building. Uh, and that's very different than how the existing buildings oriented, which gives you exposure to the east and west, uh, which is uh, challenging in terms of controlling um, sunlight and sometimes creates a lot of glare. Uh, so we've worked through a lot of these issues um, with the, the community uh, and identified priorities. 
uh, with the mechanical systems um, in terms of uh, recycled uh, content in materials and construction materials, um, identifying uh, safe materials uh, to use. Um, so uh, I would say that, you know, what we're doing here in terms of the energy um, side is uh, we're improving um, the building significantly from where it is today uh, in terms of uh, energy uh, usage. Um, the overall usage will, um, will increase because we're making uh, the building uh, larger and uh, we have more air changes per hour uh, that we're required to uh, do during, uh, during um, uh, code today. But um, the strategy had been working closely. Uh, we've provided um, uh, opportunities for locations of solar panels uh, in the future. Uh, the entire roof of the gymnasium has been organized so that there's uh, almost no uh, equipment on that roof. So that becomes a field for future PVs. And, um, we've organized the uh, roofing equipment on the new Freshman Academy to maximize as much as we can the roof area for future PVs. And they, we've been working with the city uh, with that potential um, track uh, that's happening in parallel. So the structure has been designed to be able to support that and the infrastructure has been put in place to be able to um, run uh, the uh, pathways and, and wiring uh, so that it's easily connected. So we could, we could if you have specific questions, I, we could get into that in far more detail, but in terms of broad brush, um, we're, uh, we're tracking at uh, lead silver and uh, above. So um, on, a, on a lead strategy, um, we are, we are uh, pursuing uh, that um, certification on the project. Will you be repurposing the underground bomb shelter slash passages? Bob, could, I'm familiar with the passage. I'm not sure what they're referring to as a space as a bomb shelter. Can you? I, I think they're referring to what you and I would consider to be the kind of mechanical tunnels that are being used. So you might follow up with more detail, but um, we are reusing all the uh, regularly habitable spaces within the building. Again, it's a transformative renovation. So even as you look at the lower level of the 1922 building, it feels like a basement right now. It's going to feel very different when we get done um, with the full renovations. You might want to add to that, Robin. Uh, so the tunnel that connects the Freshman Academy to the uh, East Building, that tunnel um, will ha be reused for continual utilities. We have fiber optic cables that run through it to connect it to the power plant. So. Uh, Rex and Chris, what is the plan for soil contamination and removal? Sure, so some soil testing will begin to be done on site. Some preliminary testing has already been done. Uh, luckily, the job is not a big export, as we call it, um, because of the, uh, the basements in both 75 Arcan, the existing building, and where the, uh, the current pool is. A lot of the material actually stays on site. Only a minimal amount will be coming off, but everything will be obviously tested and then taken care of. Uh, we'll have a licensed site um, practitioner, LSP, on site to monitor all that. Um, and we'll, it'll, you know, I don't see maybe big, much of a challenge with pulling the stuff off site. Like I said, testing will begin before any stuff gets pulled off site. Chris, with the start of construction, could the construction start start earlier with the building now being empty? Can we find that silver lining of the COVID closures? I wish. It's actually something we studied quite a bit, but um, do the, the place where we are with the job, with the, um, the design and the award of subcontracts and the fact that we need um, the new gym to be online before we take the existing uh, gym down, we couldn't uh, find a way to help have that this uh, COVID help us to give us that silver lining. So unfortunately, we could not accelerate it during that. Jim, if we have money left over, can we have a bridge that connects the parking garage to the school? The, uh, the scope has been uh, set in an agreement with the Mass School Building Authority that is funding a large portion of the cost and um, we won't be able to expand uh, the scope of the project. So the answer to that would be most likely no. And similarly, will there be updates to Alumni Field Collie Stadium? That is also not in scope. 
Uh, this question also asked about the silver lining of COVID. Um, to answer Kristen's question, will there be freshmen be moved to a temporary location? I think Bob started to address that already. Um, yeah, so I could, the freshmen are not moved to a temporary location. They actually will continue and stay in the freshman academy until the entire project is complete. And the reason for that is that, as Joe had described, how we sequence through the building and renovate portions, we need to keep a large part of the building empty. So somewhere in the range of 100 classrooms or 100 classroom equivalents have been able to be vacated. We would not want the freshmen to move in and add more people to the building. We need to keep the, the vacated spaces so that we can get the work done. I hope that answers the question. Joe, will the temperature in each classroom be able to be controlled by the teacher? The, the new mechanical system is state of the art and the controls um, give uh, the user um, a lot of uh, flexibility. However, the, um, the uh, teacher will have uh, limited controls over the classroom um, and each classroom will have their own thermostat. Uh, but it's controlled from its central system uh, within the school department. Bob, how come there will not be a swimming pool? Oh, that that brings back a lot of dialogue and, and a lot of, uh, you know, work that was done on behalf of the city, but the city themselves trying to reconcile with the MSBA. Um, the MSBA has been clear that they do not uh, fund or will not fund a project is their language that includes a uh, new pool structure. We do know that there are some schools across the state and I think some of them are um, maybe preceded this project where pools were left in place that, but they effectively could not be part of the project itself. Um, so that, that was a, a strong debate. We know that uh, the state really wants to be fair with how they spend their funds and most schools don't have a pool. So that's one of the reasons I think they, they target that and say um, that they won't participate in the project that has one. Um, but we also know that this is a city full of canals, that that was a great asset. And unfortunately, um, the state was pretty clear on their terms going forward and they would not allow the pool. That is all our questions. We have some general comments, but if people have more questions, please type them in. And uh, I, we can also say that uh, if you think of something, maybe after this presentation, um, maybe uh, Mike, Roxanne, or others can speak to what would be the proper way to, to follow up. Um, but we are, we are on the project. Uh, this entire team is continuing to work on the project. I'm sure we'll have other opportunities to present and answer questions, um, but we're eager to kind of help, help people understand what to expect and when. A uh, new question came up, sorry, just to confirm the freshmen will not be moving this year. That may actually be more of a question for a headmaster or head of school about freshman school. There's where their classes are occurring. So currently the freshman academy is uh, not being used by freshmen because we are all in one building because we have such a limited population in person. Um, but we, we, we plan on resuming back to normal once we have a full, um, we're at full capacity and using the Freshman Academy again. So for this year, we're not currently using the Freshman Academy to um, allow all of the students who will be in person to be on the campus at the high school and receive um, all of the services uh, in one spot. All right. Any other questions? Are we caught up with our all of our questioning at this point? We are. We have just comments. So if there are questions throughout this process, uh, you can feel free to email me. You can find me pretty accessible on the LHS website. Um, and you can send me an email. And I will be happy to forward. I, I meet with the, the team on a weekly basis, the team that's in front of you today. And I can assure you that they're working very hard. Um, communicating with uh, city officials and with the school department to ensure there's a 
great line of communication happening throughout the process. So we want to make this an inclusive process within the community, therefore having this meeting today. Um, and we'll continue to be um, available to have um, meetings as we move forward throughout the tenure of this project. If there are no other questions, I think we can conclude the meeting. Uh, I, want to I want to thank all of our panelists here today from the various stakeholders and part of the and all uh, that represent all of the construction teams and building committees and also thank our translators for being here today and I'd like to thank Jeffrey Pickett for hosting us from uh, LPS who's done a great job in getting us off the ground today uh, so if, again if you have any questions moving forward feel free to to send me an email directly and I can forward it to the appropriate uh, folks here on this team and Jeffrey do you just want to mention that this would be broadcast on um, L is it uh, LTS, LTC and um, LPS TV as well? Yes, um, LTC is actually broadcasting this live as we speak, and I'm sure that they'll be replaying it on uh, the government channel, Channel 99, and also uh, we'll be replaying it on the education channel, which is Channel 22, and the video will also be available for you on the Lowell Public Schools website, um, as will the presentation. So you'll be able to enjoy this uh, presentation again in many formats. And I um, uh, just want to thank everybody for tuning in. So that will conclude our meeting for the Lowell High School Construction Project presentation. And we'll thank you again for joining and we hope to see you again very soon. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.